Hello everybody and welcome back to Seasons, a how-to guide, tips and tricks. This is part 7. This video will be all about equipment and the various things that you need to know related to Seasons as well as some strategies uh, that I have employed uh, with respect to Seasons play to uh, kind of maximize, once again, maximize your money. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is equipment and the need for it to be repaired. So. If we go into, let's say, this quad track here, and we pull up the F1 menu, you're going to see that we have two and a half engine hours or seven days until maintenance is required. We'll see down in the bottom right, uh, we have 27 and a half hours on this particular piece of machinery. Uh, if we go over to another tractor, like uh, this one, this is our Walter that we purchased when we were doing the brass work, we'll see that we have 0.5 hours. It says we have 29.4 engine hours or seven days until maintenance is required. So since we're playing on this series with three day seasons, uh, we have basically um, three, six, what's up? We have three, six, nine, 12 game days per game year, okay? So what we have to do is we have to do maintenance twice a year on our equipment or every 30 hours, whichever comes first. So to do maintenance, basically you need to take your motorized implement, be it a tractor, truck, uh, a car, anything that has a motor that you would get in it and start. You can pull it up here to either the store or to a repair point our customized point at the farm. Go up here, you activate the trigger, and you'll see that there's now a repair button. Click that, it'll say, do you want to perform maintenance on your implement for, and then it'll have an amount. So this one is $2,281. I'm gonna say no. Um, now, if you don't do maintenance on the implement, uh, there will be repercussions. So let's, uh, kind of simulate that. I'll be right back. Okay, through the miracle of video editing, we are right here. And if we go back in our quad track, we'll see we now have 55 and a half hours. If we look at the F1 menu, it says maintenance is required. Let's see if we can start this thing up. And yeah, that time it started pretty good. All right, well, basically what can happen is if you don't pay for maintenance every 30 hours, uh, you could run into a scenario where your equipment breaks down on you. Uh, it may be difficult to start. It may not uh, it may not run the whole time. It may, you may be in the field working and it may cut off on you. you may have difficulty getting it back to the store, back to a uh, customization point to do your repairs. But let's see what it costs us now to do our maintenance. Remember, it was like $2,280. Now it's $9,100. $9,100 to all of a sudden do our maintenance. Let's uh, age this thing just a little bit more and uh, see what it costs at that point. And once again, through the magic of video editing, we are back. Let's go ahead and check out. We are now at 69 hours. We still say maintenance is required. Let's see if we'll start up now. It's a little hesitant there, wasn't it? Let's cut it off. Do it one more time. So it's not wanting to start. go ahead and pull her on in here to activate our trigger to repair and now we are socked with a giant bill of fifty seven thousand dollars to do maintenance on this particular tractor so it is important let's go ahead and do that maintenance because you'll notice something else we can't sell this tractor 
at the store. We have to first repair it. Once we repair it, now we can sell it. There, we've sold it. Something else to note is let's jump in to Jump back. Let's have Voltrat. Let's see if we can do this, or we may not be able to with this particular example. Uh, well, we should be able to, with our bale trailer, we haven't used that too much. Over here, need to repair, $5, $257,000, what does it cost to buy this tractor? just a base Volta S. I did not uh, pick any other options. 289,000. 257,000. Okay. Let's go get the bale stacker and I'll talk to you about what I'm wanting to do here. With Seasons you have a 30 minute um, loan period basically where if you buy something uh, at the store, you can use it for 30 minutes of real time, not 30 game minutes, but 30 real life minutes. And if you are done using it and you wish to sell it back after those 30 game minutes, or in not game minutes, real life minutes, you can sell it back for full price. So it's kind of like borrowing um, a piece of machinery that you're only going to use for a very short period of time you can sell it back at full price. So that's an option uh, for you as opposed to uh, leasing something for a very short term period. 52,000. Let's check. 70,000. Not working for me. Maybe we use this. I can't fathom that we used this trailer for more than a half hour in my demonstrations, but maybe we did. Move it out of the way here. Let's talk about some other stuff. So let me read a little bit from the wiki on Real Miss's website uh, that relates to, or the manual that relates to vehicles. So a new vehicle maintenance system has been implemented where you need to repair your vehicles manually. Uh, we already talked about needing to repair every 30 engine hours or twice a year. So if you have a lot of tractors and you really don't put a lot of hours on your equipment, on your machinery, you're going to kind of need to keep track of where you are in the year. And at the end of summer, you need to do maintenance. At the end of winter, you need to do maintenance, regardless of how many hours you might have on your powered equipment. Um, if you don't, then you may run into a a case where when you do go to use it, it doesn't want to start or it doesn't want to run very well in the in the field. And then when you go to do maintenance, it's going to cost you an absolute fortune. Uh, something else to think about is that strategy of short-term purchasing equipment. So if you buy something and you only need it for a very short period of time, you can use it and then sell it. Uh, so we didn't use that mower for long. Go back here. Where's that tractor at? Of course, it was right beside me, wasn't it? The whole time.
Any other time I can get lined up on that three point hitch pretty easy, but no. We're on camera, it doesn't work right, right? It's also cheaper than it should be, right? Sixteen thousand, and that was eleven thousand. Let me check here. See how many hours we got on it. Zero hours. Okay. Well, they must have changed that since uh, one point one or one point two. So completely ignore the uh, point I was about to make about uh, if you buy things for a short period of time. You'd use them and sell them back at full price. They must have taken that out. Um, something else that's changed is the depreciation on your vehicles. You're going to find that your vehicles basically uh, will have a different, will hold a value differently than they used to with the base game. And that is because they're trying with seasons, they're trying to use real world depreciation values um, for equipment to extrapolate out. Uh, what you should get back when you sell back used equipment. Um, let's talk about strategies. So one strategy that I like to employ is to only own the equipment that I need for the immediate future or current tasks. <clears throat> so if we look at our garage, of course most of this stuff is, well some of this stuff is base equipment that we came with. So we start with the harvester and a harvester header on uh, the Goldcrest, just the base Goldcrest Valley starting map. If we're starting this with seasons, there is no need to own a harvester on day one because you're not going to be harvesting anything for at least half of a game year, if not three quarters of a game year. So you should sell this sell it right away you'll get most value if you sell it right away you're not going to use it um, so there's no use to keeping it around and owning it and it tying up money in daily maintenance so let's take a look at our finance screen so vehicle running costs look at this for the last four game days Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and Friday we've had five thousand dollars for vehicle running costs. All we've done really is fast forward time those days. We didn't really do anything. But still we're being hit for $5,000 in maintenance costs. And that is because of the equipment that we own. Even if we're not using it, it's costing us some money. So if we look at, let's say, cultivators, and we look at this little cultivator here, we can see it's supposed to cost $5 a day maintenance. Look at the garage. Um, it's costing us actually more like twenty-three and a half dollars a day because this thing's got twenty-three hours on it. Let's go back here and look at this screen again. Let's try to look at this screen here. The screen shows us the maintenance costs for some of these implements. The Volter S here, seven hundred twenty-two dollars a day. Case. $55 a day. Here's that cultivator. $23 a day because it's got so many hours on it. So your best to ditch this cultivator, sell this thing, and if you need a cultivator, buy it new. Now you're going to be spending a heck of a lot less money. And you got the same piece of equipment. So be very, very cautious of your daily maintenance. Only own what you need to own for the current season and or the current yeah the current um, season that you're in and maybe what you're coming up next to next season. So if you start out in early spring and the map you're on has a harvester, sell it. If the map you're on has a forage harvester, sell it. Uh, if the map you're on has um, what else are you going to do? Mowers. You might want to sell them. You might keep them, but you might sell them. Um, if you've got a plow, plow your fields in early spring and sell it. 
you're not going to plow either one until you buy another field or two for three more game years or if you're playing with the Midwest Geo for a year and a half because you need to go through three harvests to need to plow again. So owning that plow for three years or you need to do it again is just throwing money out the window. So sell it. Uh, after you plant your fields, sell the cedar. There's no reason to keep it around for an entire game year, especially if you're playing with very long seasons. Okay? So if you're playing, let's say, with 21-day seasons, and you have planted all of your crops by mid-spring, you have no intention of buying any more fields anytime soon, sell that cedar. Reason is... You're going to have 21 days of summer, 21 days of autumn, and 21 days of winter. So that's 63 game days that you're going to be paying maintenance on that cedar when it's just sitting in your garage doing nothing. Sell it, and then when you need to see it again, buy something else. Or lease it. Uh, with seasons, leasing is a very, very viable option. Uh, especially on things you only need for a very short period of time. A mowing, okay? Your your mowing season is late spring, all of summer, all of autumn. At the end of autumn, seriously think about getting rid of your mowers. Because you're not going to need them at all during winter. And for the first part of spring, maybe for the second part of spring, you're not going to use them. So for half of the year, you're not using the mowers. Seriously think about getting rid of them. Um... Think about leasing things you don't use a lot of, uh, but you still want to have around a little bit. Uh, for example, trailers. Tippers. Let's look at a tipper. Where are we at? Seriously, where? Here they are. Let's look at this Joskins tipper. Okay? Cost us thirty-five thousand dollars to own this bad boy. Cost us three thousand dollars to lease it for the first day. But then after that, it's only going to cost us two hundred eighty dollars a day to keep it around, and fourteen hundred dollars per operating hour. Okay, this thing only racks up time when it's hooked up to a tractor. So if you leave it hooked up to a tractor, eh, you're going to be ticking up some operating time. If you, and this operating hour is real life hours. This is time that ticks off of your clock in your, on your watch. This is not game time. This is time that ticks off in real life operating hours. 60 real life minutes is one operating hour in game. So if you only use this trailer to transport crops to and from the field to the silo or from the silo to a cell point, you're not going to rack up very many operating hours. You're going to rack up lots of days at $280 a day, but it's going to take an awful lot of days at $280 a day to get anywhere close to $35,000. So it may be more effective with your money to lease things like this trailer as opposed to buying it and letting it sit around. Um, plus, it's $15 a day. Not a bad deal. It's actually less than $15 a day. Let's go ahead and buy it. And see what season says. Now let's check our garage. Seasons. It's not $87.50 a day. So you know what? Stop something here. Let's do this. This is completely not recommended. Never change your season length in the middle of a game save. Because it can severely impact your growth rate of your um yep, there. severely impact the growth rate and the uh various other things related to your harvest.
So take a look at this trailer. When we were at three game days, three seasons per game day, okay? And we look at the trailer maintenance in the garage, it's costing us $87.50 a day to own this trailer because of three-day seasons. Let's go change this to the max 24-day seasons. People that watch my churn farm series knows that I'm no, I'm no, uh, not afraid of 24-day seasons. So now let's take a look at the garage. Now this trailer only costs us 11, basically $11 a day. So we've taken $80, $84 off of the cost of this per game day um, by basically playing a longer season. So what they are doing is it's costing you significantly more for your equipment the shorter your season length because you're going to be able to roll around and get money a little bit quicker. So the longer your season, the less you'll have to pay in daily maintenance. But of course, the more daily maintenance you'll have. It probably comes out to an even wash in the end. So it's not that big of a deal, but it's something to be aware of. So to summarize, uh, you have to maintain any powered equipment that includes anything that you get in and start. That includes belts, okay, trucks, forestry equipment, like your wood chipper, your buffalo, your tree harvesters, telehandlers, your skid steers, your wheel loaders. You have a self-propelled mower, include that. It would include Obviously, the sugarcane harvesters that are self-propelled. Your potato and beet harvesters. Obviously, your forage harvester. Your regular harvesters. Tractors and trucks. Anything that has an engine that when you get in it, you have to start the engine. You need to do maintenance either every 30 engine hours or every basically half of game year. So six day seasons is 12 game days per year. And you can see we have, now that we've done maintenance on this tractor, we have 30 engine hours or 12 days until maintenance is required. We're only needing to require this once a year. So the information on the realist site is a little, little off. I think they might need to update that. Because their site is saying we need to do maintenance twice a year. I thought was a little off because I was pretty sure we only had to do it once a year. Um, but again, you know, there's always a chance that they're going to change some things with newer releases of seasons. You do not need to do maintenance on implements. So like this mower, fertilized spreader, you don't need to do maintenance on it. But you do need to do maintenance on motorized equipment. Anything that's motorized that you want to sell you need to first do maintenance here at the shop in order to get the maximum amount of money. Uh, you can sell things from your garage directly. For example, if we wanted to, well, we already sold the harvester. If we wanted to sell this particular tractor at $28,000. See, we're going to get 54 or 28 hours. You're going to get $54,000 from it. If we come up here and do maintenance on it, we should get more than $54,000 for that tractor because we've done maintenance. Things that we do not need for long periods of time. So, for example, plows, cultivators, cedars, or heck, even fertilized spreaders. If we fertilize all of our fields to three stages at the end of planting, if we are done planting, we've completely plowed and cultivated all of our fields there is no reason to keep that stuff around for an entire game year when you can sell it and then use that money to fund the purchase of maybe grass equipment maybe buy some animals um, and other things now always keep in mind 
that you do need to keep some money set aside to buy your harvester or to lease your harvester. Thinking about leasing, harvesters are a good good thing to maybe lease because they're pretty expensive to uh, purchase. Even this, uh, even the Bison harvester at $105,000, that's the cheapest one. But look, we can we can lease it for $9,200 initially and $840 a day. You're probably only gonna lease the thing for just a few days to harvest all your fields. And you've got an operating cost of $4,200. Um, and that's per real life hour. So if it takes you, let's pretend, let's just do a little math here, just for fun, okay? Let's pretend it takes you 10 real life hours to harvest all of your crops, okay? So it's 4,200 times 10, so it's $42,000. Let's say during those 10 hours, it takes you three game days to do that harvest. So it's 840 times three plus $42,000 plus the 9240 initial cost. So we would have leased the harvester for $53,000 is what it would cost us to basically do that. We could buy the harvester at $105,000. So right there, it's $50,000 cheaper to lease than to buy. Plus, once you're done, you return the harvester. You no longer have this maintenance cost to deal with. Um, but then you also have the flip side of, let's say you buy the harvester. You put your 10 hours on it. You bring it back and you sell it. Will you get more than half of your money back? You probably will. Okay. So at that point, it's cheaper to buy it use it and get rid of it sell it on the used market uh, for what you can get for it and then don't worry about your harvester until next harvest season next harvest season season do the exact same thing um, that is probably one of the biggest things uh, that lots of players have a hard time grasping is there is no need to own a huge fleet of equipment there's no need to own plows, cultivators, and seeders after you've done seeding. No need to own a harvester from day one because you're not going to be harvesting anything for a significantly long period of time unless you play super short seasons like a three-day season. So there you go. I hope that gave you something to chew on as far as vehicles and equipment. Uh, when we come back next time, I think we're going to be talking about the, uh, the Whoopster, the handheld device. Uh, that comes with seasons let me just check and make sure yep the next video will be all about the whoopster which is this little thing right here so we've already showed it off a little bit in uh, previous videos but this thing has lots of cool little tips and tricks uh, that you've not yet seen so until next time happy farming <laughs>